Hey everybody, this is Perch, and um, this is a, a good mail. It's not really a question, but it's a it's a it's a comment that I think we can we can discuss, and and I think it fits a lot of my thoughts as well. Um, it's it's titled "Why I Fell in Love with Comics in the First Place," and so I'll, I'll read it to you. Uh, it says, "I've been reading a lot of Marvel comics from the '60s and the '70s, and they remind me of why I love comics. It's a sense that the older stories mattered." And the sense that there's a whole lore around these characters with nuances and old stories just begging to be built upon. Yet a few few titles at Marvel have that feeling of history to it, recent exceptions being Nick Spencer's Amazing Spider-Man and Immortal Hulk. Current Marvel feels detached from its past. Look at Captain America. There is so much Marvel can do with him, and they don't. I guess if Marvel isn't making Captain America stories I want, I guess I have to create my own Captain America. I guess this creates a question to go with my feedback. If I create my own Captain America and make up a fake publishing history uh, with it, would it sell? For example, if I started the character's adventures with 436 with made-up references to stories that happened in the past 100 to 435 uh, or something like that, tell the arc and slowly piece together the gaps with making up a fake history for publication. Uh, Yeah, I think that, well, (laughs) there's a lot there. Um, so I, I, t- tackling the easier question first, um, you can do it. The, the problem is, is this, the, the advantage that Marvel and DC have, and it's an advantage that, uh, when I see a lot of online commentary, um, people tend to, you know, hand wave away this advantage. Whether, by the way, it's people do this, whether they're pro Marvel or anti Marvel, they both kind of simultaneously you know, wave it away. They do have decades of publishing history, and with that, that decades, they have brand recognition. People know Captain America because it's a brand people know. There's this built in kind of assumption that there's more behind it than what they're seeing. It's meaning, if they're seeing a Captain America comic, they just know automatically, yeah, there's, uh, there's hundreds of comics behind this. They, they know that there's as you said, history and nuance and all these, these details to the character's uh, ba- ba- uh, background. Um, if, you're, if you're brand new, if you're starting in with a completely unknown property, you don't have that advantage. And you may think, ah, it's not a big deal. But in terms of getting an audience, fair or unfair, if Marvel shows up with Captain America versus some unknown person shows up with their property, their their unknown thing. The known Captain America, despite what uh, whatever has happened, you could have a terrible 10-year run on the title of Captain America. That book, people are going to kind of naturally assume the brand they know is better. It, it, without even opening up the book, they're going to assume that, that, you know, it's, it's, it's a more of a valuable property. Now, if they spend the time to get into it, if they actually pick up both comics, read both, go, hey, this this unknown character here is written better. I really like what's going on here. I like, you know, big aspects of that. Um, You know, then then maybe, you know, those people will convert and they'll they'll they can slowly build an audience. But the key word there is slow. And most people, sad to say, won't give the comic book the time of day. It won't, they won't even begin. They're just going to go with what's safe and what's known. I mean, the reality is there's a much better beer out there than Bud Light and Coors. But those sell really well because people recognize the brand. They know that it's there and they walk in and it's like, hey, I saw this on a billboard and I'm buying Bud. And, you know, I, I, I've watched, I, I have a friend who worked in, uh, as a, a bartender. And he's like, it was amazing how many people would come in and they know they want to drink and they're kind of tired and flustered. And then they'll say, ah, give me a bud. And they'll drink the bud and then go, God, this is sewer water kind of beer. I, I, I should get something else for the second beer. And they kind of are, are surprised at themselves. Like, why did I order the, the beer I knew was going to be asked? And it's because that word was just stuck in their head and they just it just came out. This is... <laughs> <laughs> I've just compared Marvel Comics is Bud Light. No. <laughs> um, anyway, that that's the challenge you have now. But to your idea of could you could you come up with a character and just start it with all this kind of unknown backstory? Um, yeah, I think that would be a great idea. I think you should do that. I think that'd be fun. 
I think that uh, this idea of, of hinting that there's a, a deeper, bigger, vast world out there to explore is, is cool. And, you know, I, I, wish, I wish more people would. Um, I think that you, you'd just have to put some marketing behind it. You'd have to put some muscle behind it so that people, you know, were kind of in on the joke or, or they, they realize that, you know, hey, that, that you're, well, what, you, you've got to be able to communicate what it is you're trying to do. And that's that's the, the big challenge that you've got. Um, I, I we've I've talked about it on this channel before because I, I I like your question I like your comments a lot because I do think it is a huge missing element of comics today which is I think somewhere in the halls of the publisher they got this impression that if you know if the comic is too complicated if it contains too many references to backstory items if it's if it uh, if it's too dense to read, then you know we're not going to get any new audience. We're not going to get any new readers. So therefore, we've got to dumb it down. They've never used those words, dumb it down, but we've got to we got to remove all the clutter. If you look at at Dan Didio's statements over the years, when he would talk about kind of uh, simplifying the DC universe, he would he would use every phrase that means exactly kind of what it is I'm talking about now. Like we've got to declutter. We've got to Go, you know, we've got to just hit the basics. We can't make this too dense. We can't, uh, you can't, you, you shouldn't need an encyclopedia in order to pierce what the DC universe is all about. Now, I would argue if you're selling the encyclopedia as well as the comics, and maybe you do need an encyclopedia because then you're going to sell two things. So it might, it might be a good idea to, to actually require an encyclopedia to read these books. But, but anyway, but it's an exaggeration. And it's something that the publishers really got stuck in their head of, you know, complexity, nuance, details, backstory, history, all this kind of stuff, it, uh, it's harmful to readers. It's harmful to getting new people on board. If we have it, it's going to chase people away. And we have seen now, I think, almost a decade, probably a little bit more, of that strategy in action of let's just uh, let's just make things as simple as possible. The problem is I think it's the difference between serving a really great meal and junk food. You remember an amazing restaurant you went to where the chef uh, you know created some culinary masterpiece and it was it was incredible. You remember that night. You don't remember you know that one time you stopped at McDonald's in Amarillo and uh, got a you know quarter pounder. That food is forgettable. And that's what comics, I've now compared comics to Bud Light and to McDonald's. Uh, that, that's, where, that's where a lot of the mainstream comics are going really wrong, is that they've made it so easy to step into these comics, so simple to, you know, they've, they've taken out all of the work. But the work was part of the fun. It was enjoyable. It was part of the hook. Um, people like mystery. It's why you see all these videos going on about here's all the Easter eggs you missed. Why are they? Why are those so popular? It's because people like uncovering that stuff. And what's weird is the movies know this. The the directors and you know Kevin Feige has made comments about yeah we put in stuff in the movies to add some additional layers for the super fans out there. He's got it slightly wrong. It's not the super fans that typically go really in on this. As some of them do, I'm sure, but it's it's the normies. It's the people who are get very excited about. Uh, oh, you mean there's more? There's there's hidden messages here. You mean I, I have to go watch this a second time in order to get some things I missed? Oh, cool. They will do that. And what's weird is that simultaneously, as more movies embrace that kind of idea of putting in little sneaky things and and uh, Easter eggs. Comics have gone the opposite direction of removing, them, of taking the, that nuance and all that stuff out. Let's make it sure that nobody will, uh, you know, no, nobody will be left out. We want to make sure that everybody can understand this comic. But the, the problem is that's not how human behavior works. And the result is just a homogenized Bud Light McDonald's cheeseburger of a, of a comic. And don't get me wrong, McDonald's cheeseburgers are fine. And if you're thirsty... Bud Light is, you know, slightly beer-flavored water, uh, but you know, it, 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 it's not like they're Arby's. You're not, you're not, you're not risking death. But all the same, you'd you'd rather have the meal, 
And at a time when you're picking up a paper 22 page product for $4.99, yeah, you, you know, you, you're, you're paying for a meal. You're not paying for junk food. Anyway, got a little bit off track there. I, I like the idea of putting in these, uh, the, this detail. That's, that's cool. Let's have more of that. I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, it just the problem to land that idea means you're going to have to do some marketing. You have to get past that recognition problem, and that that's going to be tricky. But if you can do that, I think you've got something really cool on your hands. Um, otherwise, yeah, I, I mean, I, I love the nuance too. I think that's what made a lot of comics great in the '70s and the '80s. And and uh, what's funny is even today, when you see comics referencing and and putting in some complexity and some detail into what they're doing, they do well. Every time, whether they're big or, or indie, um, you know, Scott Snyder's Noctera got on a lot of lists as one of the better comics of the year. Well, he did, even though it's a brand new character, brand new universe, he put in some, some nuance into that thing. I can't help but think that that's part of why, you know, people went for it. It, it didn't feel like you were just reading this comic, uh, you know, in five minutes, and then you quickly forget about it. Felt like there was he, he put in reasons why you'd want to go reread it, and that's 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 why that's why White Knight sells well. That's why a lot of that's why Immortal Hulk, to your point, sold well. It's why Nick Spencer's Amazing Spider-Man, despite the fact that the internet hated Nick Spencer, like they they were all ready to tar and feather that guy forever, and yet. You know, he, uh, he he put in a book with a lot of nuance, complexity, callbacks, and, and detail in there, and it, he won people over. It tends to work. Anyway, thanks for your mail. Thanks for your question. Thanks for listening.